Illustrative math, unit three, lesson three is called exponents that are unit fractions. So when it says unit fractions, um, really important to understand that unit fractions means one in the, in the numerator. Okay, so exponents that are unit fractions. So one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, etc. Okay, so exponents, if I had like, you know, Everybody here knows 10 to the first is 10. Really even 10 to the zero, actually 10 to the zero is one. 10 squared is 100. I'm sorry, 10 to the, 10 to the first is 10, sorry. 10 to the second is 100. 10 cubed is 1,000, okay, and so forth. But the problem is what happens if I have like in between here? What if I have like 10 to the one half? What's that equal to? So that's what we're going to learn about today. So our goal, I can write square and cube roots as exponents. And I understand, understand that b to the 1 over n is equal to the nth root of b. So I'm kind of ruining the surprise for you today. But um, that is part of our goal to make sure we understand that. All right. So find the solution to each equation. So going to square root both sides. Now, some of you might say 5, but it's actually 5 and negative 5. Anytime you have to insert a square root into the equation, you need a plus and minus. <clears throat> so here, so instead of, I'll just shortcut, I'll write it as plus and minus square root of 7. Now, you can leave it as square root of 7 because that's exact. If you wanted to give an estimate, we could use a little squiggly equal sign. That means approximately, and I get 2.65. All right, and I need the plus and minus as well. So that means I have two answers. Now, if it's cubed, we cube root both sides. So hopefully you know where the cube root button is on your calculator. Um, obviously, everybody has different calculators, so I can't really tell you where that is on your calculator um, and show you, but uh, the answer there is going to be 2. Now, if it's an odd root, you don't need the plus or minus. All right, and why is that? Why do you need the plus or minus? I guess if you go back to this first one, x squared equals 25, if I plug 5 in there, 5 squared equals 25, and then negative 5, you got to technically you got to plug these both in with parentheses. So this is negative 5 times negative 5, and everybody should know a negative times a negative is a positive. <clears throat> and it doesn't really work with a cube, so like if I have y cubed equals 8, if I, if I put positive 2 and negative 2, negative 2 cubed, is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is equal to negative 8, which is not equal to 8. Okay? All right. So moving on to the next one. Okay, the next one is another cube. So I cube root. And this is going to be W equals the cubed root of 19. And as a decimal, it's going to be 2.67. Okay, not a plus or minus because it's an odd, odd root. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to kind of play around with this to the half power like I did on the very first slide. Claire said, I know that 9 squared is 9 times 9. And 9 to the first is 9, and 9 to the 0 is 1. I wonder what 9 to the 1 half means. So here's what she did. She graphed y equals 9 to the x for some whole number of values of x. So if you you could graph it on Desmos or on your, your graphing calculator, um, you know, x and y. If I were to make a table here, though, just take a look here. We know when x is 0, we said it was 1. When x is 1, we said 9. Um, when x is 2, it's 81, right? So obviously 1 half 
has got to be somewhere in between one and nine. Okay, maybe on a graph we could kind of connect the dots and see what happens. So here I I graphed it for you. Whoops. <clears throat> So here's y equals 9 to the x. So I need to go to 1 half. So I'm going to take a look here on my graph. And I'm going to see that 1 half appears to be 3. Right there, there's my point. Right there at 3. So for A, graph function yourself, what do you estimate? I'm going to say 3. So using the properties of exponents, Claire evaluated 9 to the 1 half times 9 to the 1 half. What did she get? So I'm not using the graph. I'm not using anything other than exponent properties. So if you remember, if you have like x to the m times x to the n, it's x to the m plus n. You add the powers. So as long as your bases match up, you can add the powers. So 9 to the 1 half times 9 to the 1 half is 9 to the 1 half plus 1 half is 1. Okay, <clears throat> so this would be 9 to the first. So we'll just call it 9. So for that to be true, what values, of, um, what must the value of 9 to the 1 half be? So basically we have, if you look here, it's kind of like we have something times something equals 9. So if I said x times x, we'll just pretend this is x equals 9. It's really kind of like x squared equals 9. So your answer would be, if I square root both sides, I get x equals positive and negative 3. But when I look at my graph, I see it's only positive. There's no negative 3 um, here. So I'm going to just say it's got to be 3 which is kind of like the square root of 9, which is what I got right here. Awesome. Let's try it for something. Oh, let's try it for a different number here. Okay, so this is y equals 3 to the x. Okay, so <clears throat> graph the function yourself. What do you estimate to get for 3 to the 1 half? So x is 1 half. Let's take a look at our graph here. 1 half is right around here, which if I can get my line a little straighter. Uh, there we go. Looks like, uh, I don't know, one point, I don't know, 1.67. Let's just estimate it here. So I'm going to put a little estimate sign there. Next, use exponent rules to find this. So we said 3 to the 1 half raised to the second. What did he find? Well, I would multiply these powers, right? Remember, um, x to the m to the n equals x to the m times n. You multiply, so that's going to equal 3. Then he said, that looks like a root. What do you think he means? I think he means that if I wanted to find x to the 1 half, you could square root both sides to get rid of the square. And we could say, oh, okay, 3 to the 1 half, because my square root gets rid of this squared, equals square root of 3. So that makes me think, oh, okay, 3 to the 1 half is square root of 3. And I think it would work for any value. Okay, so, so um, here's what I'm going to put here. 3 to the 1 half equals square root of 3. I think it would work for anything. Let's try another number, 6 to the 1 half. Well, if I square that, it's going to equal 6 to the first, which is 6. And then if I wanted to get rid of the square, I'd have to square root both sides, which would make this be 6 to the 1 half equals the square root of 6. So that's showing me that any 
one half power is equal to a square root. Okay, so, you know, just make sure you understand here if I have like a to the one half is equal to the square root of a. Any value. All right, so here's, it actually works for cubed roots, fourth root, fifth root, and so forth. So write the, pause the video, write this down. B to the one over N is equal to the nth root of B, okay? And as I keep going here, I guess maybe I should have used B instead of A to kind of stay consistent with that. Let's change that. B to the one half. And then it's kind of going to be the same thing for a one-third power. It's going to be cubed root. And, oh, I didn't write the two here when it's a square root. We don't put the two there, but we know it's a square root. It's there. Um, B to the one-fourth power is the fourth root of B. Sorry, I missed that. All right, and so forth all the way down until you get to B to the one over N nth root of p okay <clears throat> all right use exponent rules and your understanding of roots to find the exact value so this is going to be the square root of 25 which is a perfect square so i get five um this is going to be the square root of 15. now i don't know what that is off the top of my head if i wanted to use a calculator well, hey, how about this? Before using a calculator, let's at least estimate it. So um, I know that 15 to the 0 is 1. 15 to the 1st is 15. So 15 to the 1 half. It's somewhere between 1 and 15. Um, let's go ahead and type into my calculator. Square root of 15 is 3.87. So actually, I'm going to, instead of equals, I'm going to make an approximate. So this one is a, a approximate. This is exact. You can leave it as the square root of 15. So this is going to be the cubed root of 8, which is 2. And this is going to be the cubed root of 2, which this is exact. Um, if I wanted to take my calculator, I could type in 2 to the 1 third or cubed root of 2. It'll be the same value, um, 1.26. All right, match each expression to an equivalent expression. Okay, so let's start with the whole numbers. This is easy. This is 1. This is 7. This is 49, this is 7 times 7 times 7, 343. All right, so this is going to be a negative that flips it, so it's 1 over 7. Do you remember, um, if I have b to the negative n, that's equal to 1 over b to the n. So if I had 7 to the negative 1, it's equal to 1 over 7 to the first, which is 1 seventh. This is 1 over 7 squared, right? 7 to the negative 2, 1 over 7 to the positive 2, which is 1 over 49. 1 7, sorry, 1 over 49. Negative 3, that'd be 1 over 343. 7 to the 1 half, that's going to be the square root of 7. So there it is, 7 to the negative 1 half. Okay, so 7 to the negative 1 half is 1 over 7 to the positive 1 half. So remember, 1 half is square root, so it's 1 over the square root of 7, which would be this one right here. Uh, let me erase that. One third would be cubed root of seven. And then this would be one over the cubed root of seven. Okay, <clears throat> there we go. 
how could you explain the meaning of the one half exponent in three to the one half to a student who is absent for the lesson so they could understand the idea fully? I would basically say, all right, if I have three to the one half and I want to know what that equals, um, if I square it, I now get, well, let's leave that here. This is, I'm going to leave it like this, but I can actually say what it's equal because it's, if you multiply them, it's three to the first. Okay, and I don't really need the one there, but, and then if I want to undo the squared, I could square root both sides, so I get back to three to the one half equals the square root of three. So I would say a one half power is equal to the square root. All right, what would be another way to write 13 to the 1 fifth? So since it's 1 fifth, it's going to be fifth root of 13. All right, so I can write square and cube roots as exponents and really any number that has a um, unit of 1 in the numerator that's a fraction. All right, write the solution to this x squared equals 5 two ways, one using exponents, one using radicals. So... Square root, square root. So since I had to put the square root in, I need a plus or minus. If the square root's already there, you don't need a plus or minus. So I got plus or minus radical 5, plus and minus. And then um, using exponents, I'm going to say plus or minus 5 to the 1 half. And this is just going to be 78 to the 1 third. Okay. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.